start yet another recording here on Millcast. This is the second tournament we game uh, game we've had. Um, okay, and it looks like by the way, speaking of Shreve, Shreve's team might be able to make the next game. Uh, get it set up. Talk to Kaiser. Well, I cast. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and start looking at these teams. It is what did we just say? Team Poop. Uh, arguably the most mature team name in the NA servers versus Team Renaissance. Um, have we seen anything out of Team Renaissance? We did see I got X Orlog, a name you love to say twice. That is once again I got on X Victor? Orlog. Uh, and we did see him playing Victor. I don't think that uh, he won that game. Uh, the no. enemy team just proved to be too coordinated. However, we did see some decent mechanics from him. Mm -hmm. um, so this shall be an interesting game to watch. Team Poop versus Team Renaissance. Uh, featuring players such as Mr. Laws, who we've seen, Poopster, we've seen, uh, Ennis mm -hmm. Retribution, and of course, I God X or Log. Um, might be Ur Log, actually. There are two O's there back to back. Anyway, at any rate, we do see the Lee Sin ban. Uh, Cassiopeia and Rise being banned, which is sort of interesting because, um, uh, you know, maybe when Rise was banned, no, that doesn't make sense. All I'm mm -hmm. saying is, what uh, Cassiopeia, of course, has such a strong uh, pre six and such a such a huge amount of range that if you play against a good Cassiopeia's rise, you are just never going to get a Q off without taking uh, at least you know twice the damage back because her Q, her E, just so 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 deadly early game when Rise is at his weakest. So we did see that Rise ban, um, but you know I was going to say maybe if we saw Cassiopeia being banned that would give the other team the idea that Rise would want to be picked, because that is one of the more common counters. However, uh, it might just be kind of generally just like, eh, we don't really want to play against either Cassiopeia or Rise. Cassiopeia with her strong early game presence, Rise with his strong late game presence. Um, so we do also see Shen and Alistair being banned. Shaco on the table and Lisa banned. It might be an interesting game to see that picked up. We did see Poopster play Shaco in a, uh, <clears throat> in a 5v5 kind of drop-in uh, game. Quite quite a while ago. However, he didn't seem all that confident on sort of the tips and tricks on Shaco. Shaco is, of course, a very strong ganking jungler. He has that crit, which is so strong early game and deals so much damage. He also has a fear, a blink, stealth, a slow, just like all this crazy, crazy, crazy stuff in his kit. Um, by the way, I, I am still getting a couple friend requests today. I am going to ask, please, I'm not accepting friend requests related to Milkcast. Uh, please, please, please join the Reddit in-house sorry, Reddit in-house channel on NA or ask me questions here on this IRC. Uh, there is a web, web chat client for IFS, IRC available uh, on the milkcast.com website. Um, so the reason I'm not adding people for friends is simply because my friends list is unfortunately full. Uh, we do see, by the way, Nocturne and Twisted Fate being picked up for purple. Huge sort of like, uh, we're, sa we're safe in lane. And then all of a sudden you see a, tw a TF... Uh, Porting in, you're like, uh oh, and then you hear darkness, and then huh. Nocturne flies out of the fog of war and starts fearing you and auto attacking you, and oh god, please, I just want to make the hurting stop. Instead, switching out the Twisted Fate for Anivia, not actually as much synergy between uh, Anivia and Nocturne. If uh, Nocturne goes in with his ulti and Anivia isn't careful with his wall, he can um, split that Nocturne away from his team, and because the Nocturne is uh, deciding to pick up exhaust to make his early game ganks a little bit scarier, it does mean that a bad bleak placed Anivia wall and you have a Nocturne without any escapes, one hey. surviving the enemy team. <laughs> so, a McLaren wall, so to a speak. A McLaren wall, so to speak. So we shall see how that goes. I did like the Twisted Fate pick because it is just such a snowball-y comp. Um, you know, especially bot lane, you really nothing you can do. Honestly, there there is nothing you can do, and I don't know why more teams don't run it. Uh, Twisted Fate goes back to buy an item. Nocturne waits kind of behind the turret, and then all of a sudden, double double ulti kind of, kind of pops in and picks up uh, a ton of damage down on there. Especially synergizing very nicely with lanes with heavy CC, such as Alistair. Anyway, uh, we do see the Leona pick for blue team. I really like Leona. I think she's sort of like Alistair without you know with a little less sustain and a little more CC, uh, and sort of like Blitzcrank, only a little tankier and maybe maybe a little more viable because it's not so much hmm. skill shot based um i think it is easier to to, to be useful in a team fight well, she, as leona uh, she also packs a little bit more hard cc than uh than blitzcrank does and... actually i mean that's that's not so much fair to say because he does have the pull 
He does have the knock up and he does have the silence. He does have three forms of CC. Um, he has three is, forms of CC, but he, he um, only only two of them are hard. And one, well, um, I mean, I don't know. It's got okay. an AOE hard, uh, hard which but I see, feel like counts for more. The thing is, it's like, I guess hard CC is really anything that counts as a disable. And mm -hmm. silences are definitely hard CC towards casters. You know, if you have a Navia channeling, well, no, I was going to say channeling her ult, but her ult can be turned on and off. Pretty much it will. No, if you have something like, you know, um, what is a good channel spell? Um, Katarina ult. Katarina ult, perfect. That sort of hard CC that you can throw down, uh, that is hard CC, a silence. It's not, an, uh, it's not a disable. But the other thing is that Leona actually doesn't really have as much hard CC as Blitz um, because uh, Blitz is more of a disruptor. And Leona is sort of more of an immobilizer. Uh, that ulti of hers is only a, is only really CC if it perfectly hits, and it isn't all that easy to perfectly hit. You often see it just used for the slow. Mm -hmm. um, and her Zenith Blade is not a stun. That's not hard CC. It's an immobilizer, it, so it, it is sort snare. of hard CC. It's, yeah, but it's a it's a snare, um, not a stun. So I don't know. They're similar but different. I think Leona is a little bit stickier than Blitz, and also a little bit uh, more of a team fight sort of disruptor. Well, with that passive, she also like she amplifies yeah, the damage that damage her entire team does certainly. across the board. So she plays a little bit of a different role from Blitz. Blitz in team fights likes to run away from the fight, um, grab, pull someone out, and just make sure that they don't do very much for the rest of the fight. Um, whereas Leona is more about being in the thick of things, trying to get her passive on as many people as possible, so that um, her team is doing more damage and um, immobilizing and stunning people at the correct points to make sure that the team fight goes the way she wants it. Mm -hmm. So it, oh, it's and, a, they're very different roles. <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention. We did see Blitz picked up. Mm -hmm. So oh, we wow. shall see. We shall see who is the better uh, disruptor in team fights. Mm -hmm. it, it should be interesting. Oh man, we, this is going to be a great game. Yeah. We've got a Trindamere in it. Got that Gragas. I mean, I love some to see of the, the OG champions. Yeah, I love they, to see Rumble. I love to see Gragas. I love to see Blitz. I love to see Leona. I love Corky. My favorite AD by far. Anivia. Uh, and Nivia, of course, so, just so sort of like impactful in a way, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like someone Super like a range rumble. Yeah, yeah. Someone like a rise, I feel, is just like, yeah, yeah, cool. You do a lot of damage. You have a single target snare. <sighs> Boring. And Nivia, on the other hand, that wall, that stun, that damage, that egg, that <laughs> that passive, that passive. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, she's just such an interesting champion design. Rise is like. Rise is like old school, kind of like coming over from Dota. You want people to kind of just like a little bit plain to see. And then Navia uh, is just like, what? All this stuff in walls? one kit? You make walls? You for real? Um, so yeah, I'd love to see that. I'm going to go ahead and get a green tea, by the way. Mm, that sounds really good. Um, I, I'll grab something when you return. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get this going full screen. Um, anyway, for those tuning in, be sure to send this to all your friends. We are going to be casting games all day long. If you have a five scene, go ahead and uh, uh, get the uh, get the uh, the information into the Reddit in-house channel. Um, so, or just add or, just or add, add Kaiser Wilhelm on the NA server and get him your team info. I think we are going to keep going with these team games all day today. I am actually free all day Saturday, oh, baby. Too. Where Man. I am. All right. At the some point, I might Friday have to take night. a little nap, but I think that this is going to be a big weekend for us. So yep. tell your friends. Um, be might be time to advertise on Solo Mid and CLG, although I really dread it because I know it's going to be um, other teams are going to want in. <laughs> so logistics, man, they're awesome. So, yep. All right, adding people. Let's do it. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting. I got X or Log has a pretty interesting champion selection so far in these. They're going to be running the double AP. Um, it's a kill lane bot. I don't know if we really touched on that. Oh, crap. Um, they really don't have... First world problems. I just dropped my Coca-Cola on the floor. Now it's going to be like I just, a minute. Before. I just realized that Purple's running a kill lane. Did I miss that part? I think we did. We are the worst casters in this game. So it looks oh like no God. AD carry being picked up by Purple Team. Uh, so it looks like it's probably going to be definitely Blitz. And then I want to say... 
I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know about this, in fact, because this is really not the comp that you want to run all these melees against. Grog is, of course, so good at resetting team fights. Um, we shall see. We shall see how it goes. Maybe a clutch and maybe a wall is uh, going to hurt them. However, Corky. Trindamir and Gragas each able to get over the, the Anivia wall without blowing flash. I mean, they do have a lot of AOE ults again. Like, they, they have that, uh, they have Blitzcrank ult, Rumble ult, um, Anivia ult. They could do a lot of AOE magic damage. It'll be interesting. Yeah, very interesting to watch. Yeah. A very, a very strange lineup from Team Renaissance. Maybe they will reinvent the way we look at league teams. Oh, that was a little corny. Very. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna go grab on a little some water on you're that ashamed. one. Yeah, I'm a little, a little ashamed. Okay, maybe, cool. maybe I'll make some puns in this one. Oh, I've been trying to hold myself back, but you're gonna be banned. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Let's see. While he's gone, I might go over some league puns. Uh. No, I can't think of a single one based on any of these champ names. Like, the really cheesy ones are like Ash, Zillion. It's like, you know, oh, you want to hear an Ash pun? Yeah, you want to hear a lol pun? I got a zillion of them. Dat Ash. You know, stuff like that. But with these, it's like, there's no way you can make a subtle pun. I, I mean, puns can be funny, but they just have to be sort of like smart and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and kind of subtle, you know? It's like, you're not going to make a s smart, subtle pun based off of Blitzcrank. It's going to be like, oh, they really blitzed that. Uh -huh. No, that is not funny. So anyway, I'm going to stop talking about puns, uh, even though lol puns are just so interesting to talk about. I'm instead going to go ahead and take a look at maybe invade potential. And Nivea could actually start wall for the lols instead, of course, starting with that stun. Uh, both, both, you know, either way, it's a very, very strong kind of early game, uh, early game spell. Gonna be spotted by Nocturne here, as, uh, by, sorry, by Trindamir. Uh, Trindamir is going to spot Nocturne, Nocturne is going to spot Trindamir, however, um, I think it was Red Team's move to Meg. It looks like Rumble is starting with E, uh, which just does give him a little bit more utility in these early game fights, because he can catch them up with that slow, which of course stacks. If you hit it multiple times, um... Red team does have Blitzcrank. Uh, a ward does go down over there. Thirty seconds until minions spawn. gonna go for the grab. We shall see. Uh, gonna get spotted if he goes uh, up this ramp because there's a ward there. Very nicely done, I think, from Leona. Leona starting with that Zenith Blade. Oh, sorry. Uh, the Shield of Daybreak, which is actually her only reliable stun uh, in her kit, other than her ulti, which is a skill shot. So not all that reliable. Uh, and it looks like we are going to see the jungle uh, Udyr go ahead and start at Wolves, as is the jungle Nocturne. Boots 3, Boots 3. So maybe these guys are going to be go doing a little bit of an evade, actually. Um, sorry, a little bit of a counter jungle, but it does look like Blue Team says, I think, I think they're at Blue, guys. And decides to maybe go for that counter jungle. Uh, will they give it to Trindamir to, to, to destroy this Olaf? It does look like it's going to be a Rumble Blitzcrank bot lane. Something we don't see every day, but we shall see how it goes. Uh, Gragas looks to be heading up top. I don't know about that. Sorry, as I drink my green tea. Ooh, a little bit of misplay there. Uh, Trindamir taking a lot of XP. Uh, which I think maybe Udyr didn't want him to do. We do see uh, Trinomir gonna go mid against Anivia. I think either way could be good. Um, maybe just early on, Grog is not so comfortable with the range versus melee matchup, which is actually quite difficult to, to deal with um, if you are against an aggressive player. You don't. It wasn't um, this team that ran the Trindomir mid against that um, team with Ari, was it? I don't think it was. Okay. That was the jungle it, jungle TF game. Oh, that was a jungle TF. Yeah. Well, no, then that that's the same team. It, it is? The same people, then. Pokey Blood? Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess they like their Trinomir mid. Looks like Nocturne doesn't have Flash to get out of here. Uh, isn't Ivy going to put down a McLaren wall? Not a whole lot she could do. Maybe throw out a stun. Um, mm -hmm. but no, she is only level 2, so she didn't yet put a point into that wall. Uh, but yeah, I guess it is jungle... Uh, sorry, mid trend for the second time. And it now looks like Udyr gonna wanna, you know, favorably engage on this Nocturne. Trinomir coming in, this could be first blood. Uh, do we see, there's the exhaust. 
Uh, exhaust goes down on Trinomir, by the smart choice, although very nice bear stands. Goodyear able to pick up not only the kill, but also refresh his blue, which is probably a little bit better on him than it would have been on Trinomir. Um, mm -hmm. So nicely, nicely kind of, you know, favorable. That's not so much, uh, I think, planned. Looks like they were both just trying to pick up that kill, secure that kill. However, sort of nice luck, if you will, that Olaf got it because that is a little bit better for him. And if the blue went to Trindomir, <clears throat> especially if Trindomir ended up dying and then um, gave it to Anivia, obviously not ideal. Uh, nice, you know, doing a decent job um, last thing under turret. Of course, as I say that, uh, he does miss about five. So um, I just used him to see, you know, use his spinning slash and an auto attack to get a lot of help for So I was like, oh, this guy seems to know what he's doing. Uh, last hit under turret as mid trend. Level four against level three. So much crit damage going down. And of course, uh, Trinomir is so effective against that egg. Um, wow. And just takes down 500 health. This is sort of the thing about sending a bruiser mid. Trindomir, uh, you know, whoever, Lee Sin. Um, mm -hmm. If you let them get in melee range, think about sending an AP top. If, if you think about it, because yeah. this Gragas is, has been doing fairly well, and it's only going to get better for him. Yeah. Oh, and Anivia going low yet again. However, we do see what looks to be a gank. Nocturne only level two. Uh. No red. To speak of. No red, and of course Gragas with that E, so 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 easy to survive. Uh, ganks. Nocturne very far behind. I would like to see him maybe just go for some levels here. We see too many of these junglers uh, in these in-houses are just so focused on getting those ganks. And as a jungler, if your lane says, yo, I need a gank, you don't walk to their lane and do a gank. You you set up a jungle route that will take you after your full clear over to where they are. Um, and, you know, the more time you spend with these creeps up, not only the less XP and gold do you get, it's sort of like the, the missing CS equivalent, and you never want to miss CS. Uh, but also, as we can see Pokeblood doing, it does let you get counter jungle, uh, which is even worse because not only do you get weaker, but the enemy jungle gets stronger. Pokeblood not deciding to leave a small creep, however, um, lots of damage going on with this rumble, and this might be enough to snowball. Uh, pretty much, if you, even if you give up a single kill in a kill lane, uh, mm -hmm. you can really see yourself falling behind against that, uh, that ranged kind of harass, especially since neither of these people have any sustain. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we shall see a early two, uh, sorry, uh, one and a half K gold lead. Nocturne looks like he's going to do a little bit of counter jungling himself, however, he's going to get spotted by the Udyr, and of course he is two levels behind. Maybe going to get the smite off. Nope, doesn't get it, and this is going to be a lot of trouble. Now, for Nocturne, Trindomir not really reacting in time, however, oh, bad move from Nocturne. That is certainly going to be a kill. Uh, and it's sort of a late wall from I got X Orlog, not able to do a whole lot. Uh, lots of damage coming down. Pokeblood actually gonna fall down here. Very oh wow, well giving that Olivia blue double buff. buff. This may be enough to turn it around. However, she is going too aggressive. That is almost certainly. Oh wow, not quite level six. Go for the kill, Trinomir. Turret dive. Maybe when we see the spinning slash come off cooldown, we shall see a kill. Uh, and he did pop his glow ghost. Um. So a little Did bit he? of misplay from Unwarned, I think it would have been a little bit wiser to get that one trade, get level 6, and then go in, because double buff on Trindomir, very, very nice to have. Mm -hmm. Get that cooldown reduction for your spinning slash. That slide. is going to be the kill. I got Exorlog, you misplayed that very, very, very badly. You stuck around a little too long against Trindomir, who did so much the same damage. But you actually didn't get a kill or an assist, uh, sorry, an assist on that, but... Uh, was able to stick around for the XP, um, which actually has a deceivingly large radius around every enemy champ that dies. So even just being there as a jungler when a lane dies, even if you don't think this is, is very worth your time. Uh, looks like they are confident enough to go in here. Let's crank missing his grab um, and actually taking a lot of damage in return. This is also the problem of killing. You have to. It's a long way back to your turret once you realize you are in a weaker position. And getting pulled to zero, forced to flash. I think that mana barrier may be saving his life just a little bit. Uh, we do see a lot of damage going down on a Nocturne in his own jungle. Missed that completely. He was going for blue. He got it stolen. Once again, I would like to see a free 20 minute win for the blue team because huh. they are just so far ahead and I don't think that there's really a chance for uh, for red team. Usually, you know, I do think that there is a chance for comebacks, however, when you're snowballing I mean, they... this early in the game against this team comp, which is like Blitzcrank Rumble, that is just all about, um, you know, the early game. 
when you let the Trindomir just bully your AP mid like this, a 22 CS uh, Anivia at, at 8 minutes, you know, just so much misplay coming out from Red Team, it's a little unfortunate to see. They did have, you know, a couple of positions that could have put them in the lead, and unfortunately, they did not. Oh, almost uh, um, taking down that Leona. Oh, wow, and Leona does go down, however. Yet another kill for Corky, even a double kill! Uh, that is gonna be, like, just so much snowball potential coming out of this bot lane. Um, and this a good spot just got Red. a little bit too greedy. He got caught by the, by the Leona son, and then Rumble thinking he could get the kill. Rumble, um, ult was oh, maybe Trinimir just coming out. Low, uh, but actually, doesn't have his ulti up, does get forced to use it, doesn't decide to go balls deep and turn around and fight that, which I might have wanted to do. However, uh, of course, with that double buff, playing safe, not a bad idea. That double buff is like a uh, venereal disease just going back and forth between the two teams. Maybe a little inappropriate to say on stream, but eh, it's a Saturday. I'm relaxed. Keep it family friendly. Uh, fr friendly. friendly. Yeah. No, family okay. friendly. I shall do that. Uh, yeah. Oh well. This is the 21st century. I mean, families talking clearly about. Clearly, we have a bunch of families gathered around their yeah. um, their computer monitors watching us currently. Yeah, I'm sure we do. Uh, mm -hmm. Alright, I will keep things a little bit more PG. Uh, at any rate, we do see a very early 4k gold lead from Blue, snowballing very, 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 very happily in their favor. Trent, I think we saw him last time pick up a Zeal. This time mm -hmm. he have a BF Sword. I believe I said I'd rather see him pick up some Lifesteal, because he will be forced to use that Q every time Anivia throws an RE at him. That's the ulti and the perma, uh, the uh, Ice Blast. Is it? Mm -hmm. It is called Frostbite. So pretty much, uh, Anivia, one of the most interesting champion designs in this game, her Q and her R will apply a uh, kind of Frost passive. Doesn't stack with things like Ash's Frost Shot or Bradless Crystal Scepter. Only Anivia can apply it. But once she does, her E, which is her main damage nuke, oh, uh, sorry, lots of damage going down on a rumble. Uh, looks Ooh, like Pale Corky. flashes over. Um, pale flashes over the wall. However, not her going balls deep, uh, forcing the flash away from Corky. Um, Udyr is around. This is gonna be yet another kill for the Super Snowbally blue team. They always seem to have a jungler right where they want him to be. Um, mm -hmm. And this kill lane, just not gonna work out. A flash coming in. Uh, this, is gonna, I, this is gonna be a dive. I think it is. Corky gonna go in, gets the tag off for the, uh, the rocket barrage. Blitzcrank, grab. Power Fist is back up. Ulti was up, but he was out of mana. Anyway, uh, what was I even talking about? Oh yes, Anivia. As you can see there, her ulti is an AoE slow, which provides some nice damage over time. Her Q is a skill shot stun, which has two detonation uh, kind of pops. She does have a um, one to one ratio on both her uh, Q if it hits two times, and her E if it does get the uh, get the kind of proc off if they are already slowed. So Anivia, some of the highest damage in the game. Has a ton of utility. He, sure, her Q is a stun. She has that beautiful AoE slow, very valuable in team fights. But what it all comes down to is the wall, the wall, um, and what Difference that is between a good Anivia and a bad Anivia. Exactly, right there. putting down that wall. And actually, when I play Anivia, uh, I do it a little bit differently. I put obviously you want to max your E first, as that is your sort of damage finisher spell um, that pretty much your entire combo relies on. However, I don't max Q. I max W. And when you yep. can wall pretty much 70% of the width of a lane, there's just so much you can use it for. Not going to be so effective against a team of Trinomir, uh, uh, Trinomir, Gragas, and Corky. You can, of course, just dash over that wall, but um, still quite nice. Uh, going to get caught out here, Blitzcrank. Going to have to be careful. So much damage coming off. Oh, and the stun oh. is barely missing. I think that was blind. A nice Anivia stun. Able to tag them, and I think Blitzcrank just didn't react quick enough, however. Wow, Rumble getting caught down. This is why kill lanes aren't run 90% of the time, because when you fall behind, good luck out damaging a AD carry. You can actually safely kind of poke from range. You know, kill lanes are just all about those engages. Olaf taken very low, missing that kill up top. Um, and by this stage, Gragas with 66 AP. Uh, I am going to go ahead and upload this, this video. Uh, uh, it is a bit of a snowball, a bit of a spot, but I would like... Um, Red team to kind of see what they did wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. This bruiser lane, I mean, you know, not a whole lot to talk about. Usually, if you're gonna want to run a kill lane, by the way, uh, uh, get some jungle ganks early on. When you, you know, around level three, when you're gonna decide to go in, you're sort of taking a um, 
you're sort of taking a uh, risk, right? Because you don't really know with full confidence that you are going to be able to out damage something like a Leona Corky bot lane. Um, who knows? Yeah. You know, it is sort of a risk. And what you really want to do, you want to snowball your, your lane. And the lane, by the way, a little bit of a jungle wave going in. Nocturne, I'm going to drop down a spell shield. Um, let's a little bit of it DM, but who cares? You know, I'd be mm -hmm. a little bit frustrated if our sort of cheesy comp wasn't working out so well. Uh, this is, of uh, course. I just. It makes me wonder why they would run the Rumble as the second part. Like, what, well, what was I the motivator? With, I think, you know, Rumble does have very high base damages. His Q, if mm -hmm. you can get the full... It's sort of like Garen 2.0, you know? Garen, of why, course... Why not just use LeBlanc? <laughs> exactly. Well, actually, I have run support LeBlanc on a fair number of occasions when I don't really want to play Janna. And it is so huh. funny to fight... You know, people are as afraid of support LeBlanc as they are as... AP LeBlanc because so much of her power comes from uh, base damage and not so much AP scaling. Uh, so, of course, having a solo lane for those levels is nice. By the way, we do see Blue Team once again. I think they proved last time they played that they are very good at keeping uh, keeping their timings down. Um, Overall, I'm very Golan, impressed so. uh, in all aspects of Blue Team's play. They've won every lane. They have um, run a... a I'm not going to say this is a, a non Standard composition, but like where they've run people has been a little bit off. Their um, their jungler is very active. Yeah. Um. They they stay up on the farm. Yeah, and, and... It's, it's sort of funny. I mean, Trindamir mid, sort of easy to shut down uh, okay. with a strong laner. Anivia really, honestly, not the strongest early game laner. She's more of a team fighter. Um, mm -hmm. Very much utility focused. And uh, if you can just really just. Constantly auto attack and throw spells at uh, Trinavir, someone like Cassiopeia. Um, you can actually really just make him afraid to sit in lane, but really, Trinavir in such a dominant position right now, he's so confident that he has 2k gold and doesn't even want to go back. Same with this Corky down bot. So fine, just like, like so, you know, happy to just sit in lane with 2.6k gold. Probably just mm -hmm. gonna go for the lulzy outright IE. Purchase. You can't farm if you're not in lane. Yeah, exactly. Who would ever want to go back? There's farm to be had, people. Um, of course, for the people who are watching this, I am speaking ironically, you can do a uh, good job by pushing your lane up to the enemy turret and then sneaking back, and then by the time you make it back to mid lane, your lane should have reset. If you time it right, you only miss like a creep or two. So um, it is, of course, like not really the smartest thing to stick around in lane with 2.8k gold. Unlike Dota, if anyone is watching this stream who's maybe more familiar with Dota, Dota 2, or Han, you don't lose gold when you die, however, you're not as strong as you otherwise could be. Uh, a kill going down, sorry, missing a lot of action up here top. Ignite going down onto Trinomir very, very early. Uh, a little bit of misplay by um, by this team. The, the ulti, not, there's the ulti, and ooh, the grab does miss. However, uh, the Anivia was egged. I would have maybe wanted to see them stick around a little bit longer. Uh, however, we shall see. The exhaust does go down. Rock is gonna head back in here. Uh, might find I got our ex oh. Orlock. Very, Lane very, very flash. nice flash. Big plays. Olaf gonna speed out. Oh, and the grab connects. I think that was a mid-air axe that actually hit the Udyr while he was in the process of being grabbed. Uh, Poopster, so confident that he just stops for a little drink. <laughs> I think he has a, a serious problem with his alcoholism. Uh, but, oh, lots of damage going out on Olaf. And we'll see the ulti cooldown is almost back off. His ignite is up. If Gragas uh, connects with the Blitz, there is the cube. Come on, just ignite him and put down your... Ignite and ulti! Woohoo! Wow, the so damage, damage coming out. Gragas. He has 150 AP. Um, you know, actually an interesting note. Uh, 325 plus 147. Oh, okay, so by now his ulti, his level 2, his level 1 ulti does less damage than a level 5 barrel. <laughs> it's sort of like one of those little quirks. Um, and of course, Dragas hit very nice up top because he, of all the AP mids, uh, you know, he doesn't build a Will of the Ancients, but he still has so much just base sustain with his passive. Currently giving him 37 health every time he casts a spell. That is a wonderfully scaling spell. It gives him 2% um, of his max HP. So uh, he can sort of fit up top. He has very decent wave clears, so he is very difficult to zone him. He has very high. Uh, escape potential against those ganks, and of course he does have some decent sustain. So nice to see that Gragas being played up solo top. Uh, you used to see it, it does sort of fall out of favor. I got X Orlock by the way. Uh, Anivia 
very, very mana hungry champion. She wants to keep that ulti down in team fights. Her wall is very expensive. Her Q is very expensive. Her E is very expensive. Looks like blue has a timer on this blue buff too. They're just oh, yeah, chilling they're on, on it. And they have a pick ward in the brush. No oracles yet being picked up. Um, but once Here's, again, here these timers from blue team just totally trouncing red. Uh, who I think really not ready for they're, this they're level of coordination. And here, yeah, uh, yeah, you're talking about blue team, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, they, these guys are very coordinated. Uh, interesting to see exactly how well they were able to do this. Uh, a nice Leona ulti is going to connect. Udyr gets pulled into turret range. That is going to be a kill. Very nice grab coming up from Blitz. Um, so, I mean, you know, I think that Red Team, if they get a nice Blitz grab, can still get a pick. Or I just think that at this point, 15 to 4, 10k in the advantage of Blue. Just looks like, I mean, really nothing Red Team is going to be able to do to come back from this. If you lose lane, game will snowball, and I think every, pretty much every game of solo queue ever proves that. Team coordination is nice, however, it is very hard to get back. Corky actually leaving his Leona maybe to die here. That is uh, so much CC coming out from Blitz, and just barely surviving. A very nice heal is popped by the Corky to save the life of the Leona. I love seeing team play like that. It makes yep. me all warm and fuzzy inside. When That's why we started this thing. Exactly. So we could see team play like that. Exactly. Uh, I mean, it really is. You know, you. I, I think that the biggest problem with solo queue is that uh, people are so easy to give up on their teammates. Because it mm -hmm. is solo queue. You're not, you're, you know, you maybe don't play to play to win a lot of the time you play to play well and that's what that's really all you can do in solo if you can't count on a win so mm -hmm. um i mean it's just all too often that you see you know an anivia would run away from a teammate without putting a wall down you know rumble would run away and not use his ulti corky would run away from leona and not use heal uh, so very nice play uh from blue team to really act as a team uh, and I think that they are probably going to take this game, and they really deserve to. We have just passed the 20-minute mark. <clears throat> no surrender coming out from Red Team. They are 50% uh, weaker than Blue, if you want to look at the map. Um, ooh, and a nice grab. However, I think, of course... Oh, very good stun from Leona. Uh, however, I mean, it is only Trindamir and Leona mid, and they don't want to go in on that. So maybe a little bit of a wasted ulti. It was nice to see her hit that skill shot. However, I think Trindamir was safe. Um, and we shall see. Maybe, maybe I'm completely reading this wrong. Purple team, maybe if they get the, uh, the grab or something, they have this, you know, hidden sort of, wow, actually, Leona gets taken very low. Ooh, and just 20 oh. health because the, um, the, the, the sort of permafrost from Anivia did miss. Uh, the Ignite maybe goes down a little bit that. early, uh, so... Looks like Corky is able to get the kill on Nocturne. It flashes over the wall. Udyr might be able to pick up some stuns. He is going to run into Olaf. He does have a red buff. He's probably going to want to hold on to that. Uh, and that is um, everyone from blue. Looks like they are going to escape here. Can Blitz get the blind grab over the wall? Uh, let's see here. Looks like he's just going to keep running. Uh, ooh, and that is really risky. That is almost certainly going to be a dead Corky. A nice grab from NS Retribution. Uh, the cooldown on his Valkyrie was up in three seconds. Flash was down. Heal was down. Um, so, um, but meanwhile, uh, uh, meanwhile Manivia getting, I think getting egged um, and just down. dropped instantly. Mm -hmm. uh, almost took the Leona when she rezzed up very briefly, but not quite enough damage. Uh, yeah, so, just... By the way, um, you saw that Leona escaped with just 20 health, and that is because Anivia had the R down, the ulti. Um, mm -hmm. But then, if you leave that ulti, it, the, the, the persi persistent effect only lasts for about a half second and mm -hmm. uh what that means is that instead of anivia dealing uh a 350 plus 94 she was mm -hmm. only able to deal uh, 140 175 plus 47 so aka half the damage of course dealing double damage on her e if they're slowed uh with that yeah. sorry if they're affected by that chill and dealing double damage on the flash flock frost if it hits them twice Every time it passes over someone, they do, they get a little bit of damage, and then every time uh, w when it detonates, it also deals a little bit of AoE burst. So it is possible to hit someone two times with the Flash Frost, which makes Anivia very complex to play. Um, actually, two teams, uh, two 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 players in this game uh, who kind of have these double pop spells. Sorry, Gragas finding the Rumble and just able to drop down so fast. A little bit of a ulti being used, but it does like 50 damage combined over those three teams. Uh, three people on teams. So it looks like blue team blue is gonna maybe go Baron. for Baron. The the wise decision, I'd say. Uh, they probably should put a ward here because one of them might get grabbed by Blitz, and that could be trouble. Oh. It is the Corky. 
Will they have very, the time very, to very good help? Grab. No. Uh, Leona reacting a little bit slowly, and if I were them, I might come back off. Uh, Leona did hit a very good ulti. Uh, it would have been good to see maybe. Um, Here comes Trin, earlier. though. Trinimir, this wall, not maxed, does not uh, really have all that much width, but perfectly put between there, uh, able to block him off. Trinimir gets focused down and is forced to use that ulti, but of course, Trinimir, that's sort of what you want. Blitzcrank waiting in the wings. The grab on Trinibir if he gets baited into going mid. So I'm just gonna go B. And there's the grab. There's the knockoff. There's the ulti. Ooh, but Trinibir, oh, not enough damage. Not enough damage. Uh, I think that that you know was sort of the right thing for Blitzcrank to do. Uh, I would have certainly done it too. Oh, and a nice wall able to block her off again. Trinibir really showing that she doesn't have to max the wall to be effective. Leona not gonna go down, however. Trinibir coming back in. Has that red buff almost certainly gonna pick up the kill here. Exhaust is blown. The Anivia yeah, Anivia's doesn't have down, so. She is dead. Oh, and not. Uh, once again, the Ignite going down a little bit early on the Trinomir. Uh, there is the Ace. 23 to 6, and they didn't even have their Quirky there that whole time. That's and that is, and that is a surrender. Very well played from Blue, proving once again that they were one of the most coordinated teams in this league. Able to really get those timers on Dragon, timers on the enemy Blue buff, and kind of doing that whole M5 style. If that's what I'm gonna call it. Uh, really, huh. it is a little bit unfair to give. Th there, M5 there's so that much, much to M5. It's hard to um, define the, their style, <laughs> really. Uh, but I mean, really, what I'm trying to say by that is that I think these guys, you know, they're not solo queue gods. They're not legends. If you look at their elos, they are mostly in the 1500, 1600 bracket, which many people would say is not quote unquote high elo. However, they may lack, you know, who knows why they're at their elo. I'm not. I never judge people based on their elos because clearly, as you can see in these games. All these players are doing a very good job um, kind of playing at a high level. And, you know, maybe they're in that elo because of maybe mechanics or just rage, don't want to run elo, who knows. But when they come together as a fives team, you can really see that level of coordination. And I think what I mean by M5 style is that if you look at the way M5 plays in tournaments, it's not so much like, you know, we are mechanically the best and we are all 2K elo and, you know, we are, we are streamers who play and we play for two years plays in beta, very good at the game, blah, blah, blah. Instead, it's all about, like, we are going to group, we are going to take objectives, objectives, we are going to time those objectives, and we are just going to fight in favorable position after favorable position. So it is interesting to see things like Trindamir mid. Uh, I think I got X Orlock didn't really exploit the uh, melee versus range matchup nearly enough, um, and could have actually really come out ahead. Did lose that red buff, uh, double buff early on. Things like that really sort of just mechanical mistakes on the side of Purple Team. But this game was not won on mechanics alone. It was certainly a game where Blue Team once again showing that they have some of the best teamwork we've seen so far in these Reddit in-house games. So I'm going to go ahead and end this recording. Uh, very nicely played from both teams. And you did just get the invite from Gab, right? Looks like we've got yeah, our Mardian. third game of the tournament today. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to record this win for Team Poop. Uh, which, by the way, excellent team, terrible name. Uh, at any rate, very nicely played from both teams, and we shall see you guys, the viewers, in the next game. GG WP.